National Library this afternoon to join us at this um, session, which is part of the exhibition program Transition by WMA. My name is Vivian Fong. I'm the project director of WMA. Um, so this exhibition that is taking place at the gallery outside uh, will be on for another nine days. Um, it's themed as transition because it's what we do every year. We try to pick a theme um, that is socially related to Hong Kong and invite um, image makers from around the world through different programs to respond to this uh, issue. And from there, that we organize sessions such as this one to uh, discuss the issue in different ways um, together with some of the image makers that we have involved in as well as experts from other fields. So today, uh, what we would like to talk about here is photography in transition. It's a bit of an expert area. <laughs> and we are delighted to convene this panel moderated by Kaylin Lee, uh, who teaches at the Academy of Visual Arts in uh, the Hong Kong Baptist University and is in charge of the Bachelor of Arts program uh, there. He himself is a, a photography researcher, uh, writer, as well as a practicing photographer. <laughs> Uh, to convene this uh, session. Uh, we involved two finalists of WMA Masters whose work is being exhibited out there. Firstly, Joseph Lung, um, uh, whose work is at the far end. It's with the flags. It's the flag of Hong Kong waving in the wind. That's his way of responding to the issue of a transition in Hong Kong uh, to be with us. Uh, Joseph currently is a, an MFA candidate at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And also Foshak at the back. Uh, his work is Louis de Guerre's Nightbear. Uh, <laughs> you see a row of table um, near the entrance that features the most senior government official in Hong Kong throughout the years from the uh, pre handover days that we have the governors to the post handover days we have chief executive. And his way of discussing transition through uh, a different method of photography. Um, so great to have the two of them uh, and their work as a starting point to discuss this and we are most delighted to have Sandra Phillips um, who is uh, not only a juror of uh, this cycle of WMA Masters a competition and also uh, a curator with a very distinguished uh, career um, uh, from the San Francisco MoMA, the creator of photography, to be with us, to share with us. So without further ado, I would um, pass the microphone back to Kaylin to help us moderate this session. We'll go on for a little bit. All right, thank you, Vivian. Thank you so much for having us today. And uh, I would like to begin with uh, what we can see in this exhibition, in this year uh, transition theme. So uh, in terms of photography, a very diverse range of practice uh, We have alternative printing processes uh, The daguerreotype, one of the first uh, photographic printing, not imaging um, that we have in history We have, uh, uh, that's Phil's work uh, We also have uh, I, when I first uh, looked at Joseph's work, I, I, I thought, stupid me, it's a typology. It has to be a typology. It is so trendy indeed. That makes me not wanting to look into it because a little history. I used to uh, intern at the Sony World Photography Award in London for six years. My job is to uh, look at uh, all the competition entries approximately 100,000 every year and to categorize them yeah so to prepare them for judging yeah yeah there's no C there was no CMS back then yeah so typology has always been huge because it's uh, it can be formulated it's always 10 images for most competition in the world so you know you just have to make a body of work typology time works and you can send it to competition but uh, the more that I look into Joseph's work, talk to him, actually I find it very intriguing and also there's this sculptural thinking in the conceptualization which makes me love his work. So, and also we have, uh, uh, we have 
we have that pan, of course, Branton. Uh, we have uh, uh, photo installation, uh, uh, Redfon, and and many and also um, documentary, uh, very typical documentary by Carmen as well. So a wide range of practice, which is very exciting to see in this exhibition. Uh, today we have uh, one of the uh, jury panel, Sandra, to be with us. So uh, I, I hope we can all respond to uh, this idea of transitioning photography from different perspective, different identity. I see myself as an educator, I see myself as a writer, sometimes a practitioner. <laughs> and uh, so Sandra is a uh, very seasoned, experienced curator in photography. So we may have a curatorial point of view about transition and also uh, to practicing young, exciting photographer to give us a bit of push about the transition or the future of photographic imaging, photo maker, photo taker, uh, that kind of uh, debate. Originally, we would like to uh, include uh, Hester Kaiser, a Dutch researcher in photography, also a curator, and a jury member of World Press Photo for a couple of years. Unfortunately, she cannot uh, be here, uh, but our idea would be we would like to share her thoughts um, in her essay, so The Death of the Fewer and the Two Ways Mirror, that is also included in the exhibition catalogue. I have a, a, a summary of her essay that I would like to share towards the end of the roundtable discussion, and hopefully, uh, not hopefully, we will record today's session, we will transcribe it and uh, Hester, Vivian and myself will further work on it and hopefully in six to nine months time we will produce a, uh, a writing uh, for publishing uh, in Hong Kong or in the Netherlands. So that will be uh, the idea, uh, the participation of uh, and also the program of today's session. And uh, without further ado, I would like to begin with uh, Phil Shack, Chongman Man Gujo Sat Bing The the work is titled Sorry Louis the God's Nightmare. So I would like uh, I, I find this work very, very interesting indeed. And but I would like uh, Phil uh, to give us a, a bit of introduction yes. about this work. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Um, in fact, um, this is not my, my, my style in general. So it's a kind of one-off project. Uh, and this work is, uh, I, I do it specially for this uh, exhibition. And because uh, the subject transition is very interesting to, to me. I was born in 1974. Don't worry, I will make it short. And, um, and uh, at my age, you know, we uh, uh, I share the, the last period of this colonial rule, and then proceed to the yeah half and half. My first twenty years is under the British rule, and my second twenty years is the new Chinese government, and. So, so I, I'm, I'm one generation, or someone in particular, it, right in the middle. So uh, to me, I don't, have, I don't have any other interpretation. To me, transition simply means the handover, simply means the, the political landscape, a uh, 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 change. So, um, so it, it's keep me, it, it's really intrigued me, so I think uh, uh, the one who, who come up with these topics is more creative than myself. Um, so, I, I want to express is my, my feelings. It is something really personal. But in a way, I, I strongly believe that even though it's, it's a personal feeling, it, it's profound, but, but it could share by others if, if I could really dig it in, in, in some way, so people may feel it. So why I, I, I call it daguerreotype? In fact, it has nothing to do with daguerreotype. Daguerreotype, by the way, is an early photographic process, mid 19th century, 1830, 40 something. 
And then um, the great type is, is unique because it's could not be reproduced. It's being done on a, on a, on a, on a polished metal. And then uh, it, it's very romantic because this, this thing is very intrigued me because some, some people call that thing a mirror. It actually is a mirror with the, with the photosensitive material and that so that we can see the, see the image. It's a mirror with memory. My work is about memory. So, to some extent, they are related. Um, and then another, another thing is, um, I want to find what I could see in this historical change and how it related to myself. In fact, it related, it, it related is in, in every aspect, but I want to focus on something, something emotional, something deep. Or, or something that really could make me feel very intense. So, what in history, to me, is just a series of stories about people, some important people. Usually, they are the leader, governor, or militaries. Usually, those people. So, when it's come to my mind, yeah, those people, the governor, the government uh, 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 executive in chief, those people. And they look very familiar to me. Some of them are very familiar with me. Yeah, Macaulay, <coughs> we hike on the Macaulay Trail. And then, and then some names that, that I get used to, to talk about are, are the names of the role in Hong Kong, uh, followed by the name of those governors. And they, 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 these images, these faces are so familiar to me, some of those. But at one point, the, the most horrible thing, the most intensive thing is, I feel at, at one moment, I'm totally, I'm completely lost. I'm lost in this political, historical, social world. And then, so, I, 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 sometimes I go to Wikipedia and look at, and searching for photograph. I think most of us do it when we are lonely. And, and then, and then I, I type Hong Kong governor, and then we get the whole list. There's a lot of them. Some of the names I don't remember. I don't even know them. Okay, I just know a handful of those. And then I click, I see those images, they're familiar. And then I come up with an idea. Why not, why not try to, to examine some of the basic attribute of the photographs is not an image. When I, when I get this photograph into a print, and this print I can, it, it has some, some kind of texture, thickness. I could bend it, I could see it, I could fold it, and put it in my pocket, and then take it out and take a look again. And then we, we, we see some wrinkle on this paper, and that becomes something else. And that is, that is the way, at that one moment, Yes, maybe this is the way I could, I could transform this piece of paper, recorded photographs, and put it under certain lighting. And then I discover sometimes, I think we, we, do, we all share that moment when we look at a box, magazine, sometimes uh, maybe it's a printing problem, maybe the ink is too thick under certain lighting, and then the reflective ink may invert the image. And that exactly my feeling, the familiar faces suddenly become someone else. I feel totally lost. And that is exactly the, the, the feeling I could connect it to that piece of material, the photographs. That's the daguerreotype. No, that's the, the how I related to daguerreotype. And, 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 my, and my feeling about this and how it relates to my, my, my interpretation about transition. Yeah, basically, that's the background. Yeah, so this, not this phenomenon, but if I can use a, a proper terminology to, to describe it. So this is uh, the differential gloss happens on some of the photographic printing technique. The garotype definitely one carbon printing or carbro so it's uh for example for the garo type uh for the very dense part of a photographic image the dark shadow actually is made by a uh, silver halide and when you a silver is metal in a way so if you 
point or tilt the print, the glass, the metal plate, the plate in a different angle. Actually, you are able to see uh, quite. Uh, it can be a solarized image. Yeah, so right. the dark and the high light goes to uh, the the opposite. So I find this project. You you take you, you don't take the girl type as the way it is, but there's this personal observation, conceptualizations involved, and uh, render this seeing into your your work. And also, what we see, they are not the girl type; they are a reproduction of it. So through the reproduction, you also direct a particular way of seeing, you know, for the audience to see this right. result. And uh, but if I can continue this this mind road or route, mm -hmm. I would like to know what what's your or what's our observations or comment about this analog revival. You know, we are now living in 2018. It's Facebook, Cambridge Analytic, <laughs> surveillance, digital technology. But there's quite an urge among artists, photographer would like to go back to some of the analog um, uh, processes. For example, myself, I am, I'm, I make a lot of gum dye pro by print, which I use watercolor or pigment as a, uh, yeah, and also we have the garret type here, let alone uh, uh, silver gelatine, 35 mil, film camera, slide projector. Any thoughts, any, any ideas about this analog revival? you know, in our time. Sarah, as oh. Sandra, please. <laughs> okay, um, all of this is extremely interesting, of course. Um, I think it's important to say that, first of all, the daguerreotype is the original, it's the, the first publicly announced um, photograph, and they're unique. You can't make a second daguerreotype from the one that you um, uh, generate. Um, the only way to make a copy, a second print, is to copy the original, um, or to make a second one. So those daguerreotypes are absolutely unique, which is why I find this so interesting, because what, what happens in these pictures is that you see a second one. So the idea of generating a second picture comes from actually looking at the pictures themselves. The, the, the daguerreotype was called the mirror with a memory because it is made on a polished silver plate. Um, it's, a, it's a physical object and you can literally see yourself if you pick up the daguerreotype in the, in the part of the image that, that hasn't been affected by the photographic process itself. Um, so it's it's a it, it it was so important in the 19th century because it was the the first um, and truly um, was the first pho photographic process that was easily understood um, and it was unique um, but it was also um, incredibly accurate so. Um, one of the things that the people who were interested in looking at daguerreotypes would do would be to examine in a microscope even, or at least a loop, the little details and you could see literally a fly or um, you know, some, some object that, uh, one of them was a, um, a very early picture out of somebody's window, I think it was actually Daguerre's window, and the process took so long that you couldn't see people or uh, carriages in the street, but somebody had stopped to have his shoes shined. It was this like little teeny, teeny thing in the middle of the uh, picture, but you could see it with um, a magnifying glass. And I think, again, um, this idea of truthfulness and examination um, in the daguerreotype is something that's politically extremely relevant. I mean, it's kind of symbolic in this work. Um, I would like to know um, how you found uh, these pictures. Did you make them into daguerreotypes? Did you, um, did you 
deliberately um, transform them in some way so that they resemble daguerreotypes. And um, I noticed that they're on this um, flat surface, but um, it's slightly raised. It's like a lectern almost, or a table. Why are they on those surfaces? Um, and why are they, they look as though they're, they're um, the picture itself is distorted um, because they're not square. Why is that? I'm sure these are all these are all details that are very carefully thought through and have obviously symbolic meaning. I must say I find that these pictures very beautiful, physically very beautiful, as well as very pr provocative for reading um, into them. Yeah, thank you. You uh, get this good question. And in fact, I have uh, thought about um, how to take this photograph very precisely. Okay, and then because uh, it's very simple, I'm taking photographs of photographs. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the point. And then, and then, so every little details may affect um, how people interpret this idea, how people feel. Uh, first of all, I I I focus on the reflection and the polarization of this image. And I try my best to, to create a, a kind of, I don't know, is it the right word? The alienation of this memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to, to transform the familiar into non con familiar. So, so um, and then I, I'm looking for a reflection and then try to eliminate all other elements. I'm looking for the reflection and the reflection has to happen from this angle. With this angle, you see the distortion, okay? The face, instead of elongated, they compressed. So, so it is further um, make these faces are not recognizable, mm -hmm. even to myself, mm -hmm. even to myself. And then another, another thing I want to uh, uh, respond to your question is, um, usually we, we make use of uh, the medium of uh, photography as a, as a vehicle mm -hmm. of content. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, not all the time. But uh, the gallery type also it is, uh, is remind, uh, remind me, mm -hmm. uh, the medium is the content in itself. Mm -hmm. It's not a vehicle. It's not just a vehicle for for the for the light shadow because it could not be produced. You could take a picture about the decorative type just like you could take a picture of the microphone, mm -hmm. but it won't be the microphone itself. So I, I want to share this kind of uh, maybe it will make this idea more interesting or profound by uh, capturing the way I look at the looking. I look at looking because the photograph itself is a one way of looking, portraits. And then I want to provide a unique angle, the way I look at these photographs. So it, it, it becomes a, a, a kind of awareness of the looking. Yeah, how, how, how does it feel when you're looking at your own diary? Some people write diary every day and then you read it some years later. Oh. I forget, I, I, I thought that way, I feel that way. Yeah, that's someone else. Okay, for, for the same reason, after some years later, maybe 100 years later, 50, 50 years later, we look at the photograph from another perspective and that, that creates a kind of distance. And the distance is interesting to me. The distance created the, the, the alienation. I want, to, I want to make it visually happen. This work also. We have the I have no idea of course what the Chinese word is, but the the word um, to think about in English is reflection. Mm. And um, I wonder I'm, for me I found this material that you produce so interesting because it it's about reflection, but it made me reflect on the whole idea of how you make and why you make a photograph. And it's also a reflection about 
the passage of this time. I mean, you said very eloquently that half of your life is, has been under a certain kind of government, and now it's under a certain different kind of government. Um, but of course, the, the word reflection in Chinese is probably not the same thing. <laughs> it could be similar. I think in Chinese, we can say reflection, right? Or reflection. Yeah, so it's all equivalent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Or maybe mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Or oh, oh, I think I would call it mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Consciousness. Mm -hmm. Awaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. well, um, yes, I agree, and uh, but I would like to slowly <laughs> move on to uh, Joseph's work. His work is um, titled "The Flag of Hong Kong Waving in the Wind." Uh, Joseph, what do you think about your work? Can you tell us a bit about? But uh, just before I talk about work, I actually want to talk about uh, something about you know, analog photograph photography and. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's super interesting because me as a, I'm actually a millennial and uh, I was born in a year in 1995. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will be short. Um, but it's, um, I, I think, um, when it comes for, for young people, especially, honestly, we look at other millenn millennials and we actually go on Instagram, we see a lot of film photographs. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of you know, people using contacts T2. Uh, and it's cool because Kendall Jenner uses it. Um, but apparently, uh, also because there is a, a certain nostalgia with it, mm -hmm. and that for somehow for young people, we always kind of want to be an adult. So we, we just want to have that nostalgic experience of it. So so we turn we turn the photograph into some some form of nostalgic uh, experience. Mm -hmm. um, so we put on grain, we put on filters, we put on. So I guess, and especially also. When you look at Instagram, the reason why it's popular is because it has other filters. We're supposed to be, you know, resembling uh, film phot photography. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's also very interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, for me personally, I don't exactly always work with film photographs. Um, I, I dig that nostalgia a lot, but it's not like I think for, for me it has to do with my conceptual framework. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I use film photography has to be because of conceptual framework, not because of its look. Because if you want to go for a log, you can really go on Photoshop and click on a button, honestly, and you can't tell the difference. Um, so Are I just want photographs made with film. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can, uh, I mean, there are a lot of tests actually done by uh, photographers trying to distinguish uh, a digital modified photograph mm -hmm. and uh, actual film photograph, and you can't really tell a different ways yeah. to it. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's, um, for, for Phil's case, it's different because, uh, he, and as, as he has mentioned, uh, it's not exactly a type. Uh, and for him, it's, it's, uh, it, it has a lot to do with the conservative framework because it looks like a daguerreotype, but there's also, uh, it's also apparently not a daguerreotype. So, uh, there's a conceptual element in, in the look of a daguerreotype, and that also references back to, uh, photography uh, and started photography, um, the ontology of photography. So I think that's also a very important part of his work. Uh, but to go on, and I can talk about a lot. But to let's start off with my uh, work here. Um, it's uh, for me. It, well, it's a flag of Hong Kong, and I guess the biggest um, part of it. It's that, and uh, in a way, it will be visually interesting because we all have this conceptual visual imagery of the flag. We all know it's squarey. We all know it's, you know, it's moving, and it's 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 kind of flowing the wind. But when you actually see a photograph, you don't see it. It's twist. It's it's jumbled together. It doesn't look like a flag. Uh, and if you spend like two seconds looking at it, then you realize it's actually a flag. Mm -hmm. uh, so this crepancy is a great part. That's the that's the pun. Right, that and 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 uh, that's what draws people's attention. Um, but I guess the second pun is that when you realize you're actually looking at a photograph of a flag of Hong Kong, and if you're actually a person from Hong Kong, you realize you're reflecting upon yourself. Mm -hmm. And so, when you when you spend more than two seconds looking at a photograph, when you spend about a minute looking at a photograph, you realize, oh, I am actually reflecting on myself. Um, and I'm looking at a flag of Hong Kong, which I. I grew up looking at, uh, but I don't recognize it at all. And I guess 
that's exactly the same experience that we all have when we look at a society that we're having right now. Uh, we're looking at Hong Kong, where we're born and raised, but we don't really recognize it anymore. Um, so I think that's that's also very uh, conceptual. You know. Yeah, if I can jump in, uh, when I first look at the work, I ask myself, why black and white? I know it's almost a very naive, trivial question, mm -hmm. but you know, the red, the signifier, is totally washed out in black and white. It looks so cool, but at the same time, can I ask, yeah. why black and white? Yeah. Well, uh, can I ask what the colors of Hong Kong, the Hong Kong flag actually are? It's red. <laughs> it's red. So, it's um, red. Just, yeah. And what is the center part of it? Well, uh, it's, it's a flower. Mm -hmm. It's a bohemian flower. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a flower of Hong Kong, and with stars. Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be a, a subdivision of the Chinese flag, I guess. Uh, so you can actually, yeah, just Google that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's the uh, Hong Kong flag. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, for me, why black and white? Uh, people always ask me, except for the fact that it's cool to have pictures black and white. Uh, <laughs> uh, if, it, if it is in color, you can tell it's a flag, if, you know, at the first glance. So you don't, like, I, I like to give it the distance, but mysterious, and you know, and well, second of all, it's because black and white colors and what well, black and white photographs make the focus on the contours of the photograph mm -hmm. uh, instead of the content in a way. Uh, and so, you focus on the contours and light and shadow and the contrast of the photograph, and so you see something that is very, very abstract. Mm -hmm. um, and this is actually something that I personally learned as a photographer when I first got into a dark room. Um, first, when I first developed my first uh, picture, print my first picture, and I realized, oh, you gotta figure it out the tone of scale. You gotta figure it out, you know, the gray zone and the, the you know, the, uh, the odd stuff. And realize you can actually make a toy different photograph just by tuning and contrast and tone of scale of the photograph. Mm -hmm. um, and so, when we can, t so what we can talk about then, it's it's that I always like the photographer Hiller, Hiller, uh, Bernard Hiller Becker, uh, where they work on. Uh, Basically, German uh, conceptual photographers were to work on the industrial buildings and uh, establishments uh, back in the days, and uh, and I'd like to talk about a little bit about their history. They won uh, an award uh, with that work. Uh, you, you can actually search online, um, and um, they win an award. But the award is not a photographic award; a sculpture award. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I think that's also very important part of my work because it has a sculpture element in it. Can I tell you what the sculpture? Uh, Bernie. B-E-R-N-E. Bernie. Yeah, sorry. Bernie. Bernie Hilbert. Backer. B-C-H-E-R. Yep. There you go. There you go. So, uh, you, I, I, uh, yeah, love their work. Um, and so, like, I, I guess Kaelin, uh, Kaelin, uh, in the beginning asked me about the typology uh, that was very trendy in photography and, and, um, and, and how I respond to that. I would say um, this work is actually not a typology, uh, this is actually a sequence. Uh, so it's actually a sequential uh, photographic project as opposed to looking in a chronological order in a way, there, and there is a chronological order. Uh, but the cool part is where they can also be feel as individual images. And, and there's also a sculpture element in it. So. Uh, so you can see it's one picture here, which is very, very sculptural, and it looks totally abstract. But when you look at it with other pictures, yeah, and, uh, yeah. For the, for example, this one here, you see the, the transition, and you can read it with the uh, with the photographic narrative that goes from this and then that. Did you take them all in one day? Yeah, yeah, I did. I uh, well, I I I, uh, I can tell you that um, I only spent around 15, 30 minutes to take it, honestly. Um, and it's not something that's very hard, um, yeah, loud and uh, But I guess the point is, um, there is also this very important aspect of this particular work. Um, and the reason why they are sequential is because they're also one picture, one big picture, mm -hmm. they were awesome. Um, so if we, as photographers, I think we all know that a lot of times it's about being hardworking, being diligent, taking a lot of photographs, but also, it's about being lucky. Mm -hmm. It's about going out there, doing your stuff, and then encountering that decisive moment, which Henry could take us on 
refer to. Um, so there's also the element of serendipity in it. So I bump into this at this moment. Yeah. It, it, um, when I first was looking at it, I have to um, just interject that um, the the other judges were, there was one woman, whose name I can't remember, who made us look at this work again. And she said, it looks like there's a man in there. It looks so physical and so sort of personal and, and as though this man was struggling. And I thought, oh my god, what a wonderfully in insightful thing to say. <laughs> um, because it's, it's, yes, it is um, conceptual. Of course it's conceptual. But it's so personal. I mean, it's very, very, um, very much about struggle, it seems to me. Um, and it does look like there's some kind of figure in there just kind of struggling. Yeah, um, yeah I, um, so I'm, I'm only 23, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I'm a young kid, and for me, it's, it's actually very real. Um, I remember someone told me, and uh, it was yesterday when, when I was I was there at my my zone, and someone came to me and said to me, um, "It seems like everybody in working on this exhibition talks about the past and history." And well, I'd say, I, I, I didn't say, uh, "Well, photography is always about the past. It's always nostalgic. It's always about the past. There's always the past in there." Mm -hmm. Similar work, uh, but at the same time, it's about now for me. Um, I guess it's it's how I'm feeling right now and how I'm feeling, uh, you know, back in 2016 and how, how I have been feeling all this time. And I guess it's not just me that's feeling that way. I guess it's it's for a lot of people. I, I guess for all of us here, uh, was was been living in Hong Kong, experiencing the political instability, but also other instability in life. I guess um, if you're a person. From and I have this. Uh, I also have this um, a friend uh, who's also a young person, but he's also a political activist. And uh, he didn't read any of my statements, but he saw my work and he just came to me and said, "It's it's very sad." And, and he just took that. Uh, I feel, I yeah, I feel I feel touched by it. I guess. Um, Can I ask you one qu one last question? I'm sorry. Um, you asked for these pictures to be put in the sunlight. Why? Uh, I and mean, they will fade, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Is that part of it? I, I, well, the, the fading wasn't exactly part of it, but I, the, the reason why, it's not exactly um, the sunlight mm -hmm. that I'm going for, it's the, the class mm -hmm. and the, tr the transparency mm -hmm. uh, and the conversation that we have between the, the <coughs> work and the street outside. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. Um, it's not just about, see, it's all about, see, I'm not trying to criticize a white cube or whatever, but I guess a big part of art and, and, and photography a lot of times is that it's very close to life and, and it's just right next to a normal street mm -hmm. um, and outside, out there, it's Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, a person just told me yesterday that uh, the, the, the establishment next to my zone that we can actually see, it's actually a pro-national organization. Mm -hmm. It's just next to it. So I guess that's that's all interesting. There's also communication, and people can if you don't have to come in to see my work, you can see it through the glass. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's very very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I have a few uh, uh, respond to what we have in this really good conversation. Right? If it looks like somebody is restrained mm -hmm. when when we look at the photograph. And uh, and particular, if we read into the caption label, the caption, uh, the description, there's a this emotion in it, mm -hmm. and uh, that I would encourage uh, us to, you know, read and see and also see Joseph work. Uh, it's sort of in terms of an exhibition design. I I think you know it may not be fair to him, but you know it's not at the center. It's fair, could be difficult to have access to. But there's a reason behind the work they all face uh, towards um, a window, towards the street, actually. I was reading Jeff Cook's uh, uh, interpretations of way of seeing yesterday, and he made a very good point about white cube aesthetic that I want to tap into it. White cube 
aesthetic with high mark work on four walls, it creates a surveillance system to the viewers. You feel intimidated when you stand right at the middle, at the center, inside a white gallery. The works looks into you. But uh, Joseph's suggestion to how to mount exhibit his work in the exhibition actually goes against all this um, contemporary idea criteria about how a work should be in an exhibition that I want to bring it up here personally. Yeah, so well done, love it, 100%. And, uh, I, would, I would, excuse me, I would just make one suggestion, no titles. <laughs> I, uh, um, people have told me about it and, and I, I totally agree. Uh -huh. And I, I see, no, I try to keep it as simple as possible, as objective as possible, but I still kind of have to, like, see, I love to untitle my work a lot of time. But for this particular work, um, I thought, well, the juries are going to go through like thousands of, uh, you know, entries, and I kind of have to make clear for them, you know, at first glance. So, um, so I just labeled the flag of Hong Kong, which is, for me personally, pretty objective. But now, of course, when you talk about flag, it's so political. It's not going to be non like objective. So I guess it, the work is strong enough. You don't need those yeah. those titles. I was just going to ask a question. Point of information on both both of the works. They're both they have captions, and I, I just wondered if, if if that was part of the composition. Were the artists required, the photographers required, to caption their work? Because both of you had captions, and I tend to agree. I don't think the captions help. I, I mean, I, I'd rather not see the captions. They're too objective. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if that was a if that was a language thing. But of course, with images, we don't need to really worry. I'm a writer, so I should love the word part. But actually, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, I can't uh, speak for um, a Wing Foundation, but uh, uh, I. I participate in uh, the Bear and Bear Award last year. I was one of the finalists, so I can share my, you know, the, the yeah, uh, uh, when we submit the work, yes, caption is need, artist statement is need uh, for, I think it's, it's, it's a piece of information um, for, and, but I think at the end, in the exhibition, artist or photographer could or should have the liberty to show the tags, the, Lay um, the, the caption label, the, the, the caption or, or no. Um, but for, for this work in particular, for Joseph works in particular, uh, yeah, the work is strong enough for, for seeing. Stand there, look at the work. Probably the text could be reconsidered. Uh, not just uh, the attitude, but also the presence of it. Maybe the text, we take out the text from the work it will be much more self-explanatory in a way, but it's just, you know, my, 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 my feeling of it, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree, I definitely agree. Um, it's, uh, well, it's, uh, it's a formality uh, to kind of have captions for exhibitions. Uh, but also, I, I, I think it's interesting because for, um, yesterday we have uh, uh, the, some some uh, guides uh, for the tour guide, uh, the, the, some tour guides uh, come in. That they're actually having a, a tour. We went foundation are having a tour for uh, disabled per people, and some of them are actually um, visually disabled and they cannot see. And so they asked me about the, the captions, and I, I feel like it, it might be hard for them to understand my work in a way. But it will add on and I add on and add layer of, of information for them definitely uh, if I have that caption. Um, so I, I guess it, it, it could be something that's optional. Uh, I could have taken it out, um, but I guess it, for for the public, uh, uh, people who are not exactly um, you know used to reading pictures and photographs, they could have a better understanding of work. I guess. Yeah, I I do agree. I remember last year we have uh, Zhang Chenyao uh, officially in pa, uh, but uh, 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 um. A politician, I, 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 I could say, he, uh, we have a private field for him. I think some of the work in the exhibition with the caption label, with the text, it helps him to visualize uh, what the work is. So uh, with text or no, of course, it's an artist's decision, but, but at the end, it could be a matter of accessibility 
as well that I think in contemporary curatorial practice it may matter. Yeah. So um, can I ask a question of both of them? Um, and this is from somebody who has only been to Hong Kong now twice. So I know nothing really except from the point of view of a distant observer and somebody who's obviously interested. But um, so both of you have um, made, um, I guess I, how, how am I going to ask this question? Do you think it's important to address, um, as, you, as you have, but indirectly, the political realities of Hong Kong in your work? I mean, it seems to me this is, this is a, um, this is very political work. How do you feel about it, I guess, is what my question is. I think um, you could uh, you could see my work uh, from a political perspective or interpretation connection, but um, it's not totally my intention. No, that's clear. yes, and that is my my very personal feeling. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I have to use these faces to 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 contextualize mm -hmm. uh, or try to make a con connection. First of all. Politics. There's no way for you to escape. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, especially now the day uh, social atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, not maybe not me. Okay, many of us in Hong Kong, we we, we feel maybe I won't I, I, I won't say frustrated, but but we, we, we get confused for mm -hmm. sure. So that kind of confusion, uh, of course, there's so many ways to express that kind of confusion. But um, yes, I come up with, with this idea. So uh, I think I'm making use of this uh, political figure to to create the, the, the connection to my to my own um, uh, confusion in my memories. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, that's the way it is. So somebody looking at your work twenty years from now. Will they have to know your history and the history of Hong Kong to really understand your work? Yes, uh, that's why, uh, yes, refer to uh, uh, yeah, that audience question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in fact, when we submit uh, uh, the work through the online system, um, in fact, we, we, we don't have to give title. Mm -hmm. We just, if you are brave enough, you could put a full stop and submit. <laughs> yeah, the system would allow you to, to do that. Okay, you, you cannot do leave it blank, but you put a full stop, submit. It is is totally acceptable. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's 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 also one of my concerns. Uh, I I titled my my photograph with a duration of time. I call that yeah. This is the first governor yeah in chief. Okay. And he ruled Hong Kong for for almost two hundred days, mm -hmm. and and then a guy one years, some some days, and then the, uh, yeah this guy okay, uh, Magnet holds ten years some days. So it is also uh, I I want to use this title to to anchor. It's become a kind of anchorage, mm -hmm. provided the the, the linkage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe this is a personal feeling. I think. It's dark, it's, it's moody in a way, so I think uh, even though you have no idea what is going on, you do feel something by looking at these images. Mm -hmm. I think, but it, and then, and, uh, in another level, yeah, when you pay attention to the titles uh, or some subtext information, you could have a, another connection mm -hmm. to this work. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm making use of this information as a as a as a uh, mixture to this image. So that means you have to, as you demand your viewer to do some work, to do some thinking about your pictures. Yes, certainly. Mm -hmm. They feel first of all, they they, they feel mm -hmm. something about it, mm -hmm. and that that is a starting point. Mm -hmm. I I think um, uh, in my opinion. Uh, sometimes you could make a photograph meaningful, profound, but boring, mm -hmm. and not intriguing, 
but uh, uh, I, I, I sometimes want to, to, to make a photographs who uh, bear some, some visually uh, emotional quality. And that would be a kind of a point that provoke people to, to think deeper or, or, or to create a, 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 a point that we could share this kind of not only emotional feeling mm -hmm. but other kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I, well I guess the work is of course political, um, but I guess if you actually watched um, a little like preview of my, my artist bio, like there's actual video of it of, of myself, mm -hmm. and um, I talk about how um, for me the flag as an object, it's, it's the purpose of this object, it's a political one, mm -hmm. and when you think about it, it doesn't have any other you know purpose for a flag mm -hmm. except for a political agenda. Um, well, it's an identity. It is. It is. But uh, well, you could you know, argue that the identity it's also part of politics, mm -hmm. and so uh, because it's of body politic. Yes. Yes. <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, and so because it's such a political object, uh, I and, and the reason why a lot of audience uh, agree that I don't need need the caption is because it's already very strong. Uh, so I, by simply taking a photograph of a political object, it's already political. Um, and, and, but I, I would like to talk about how I personally, I'm, I'm actually not a very, very political, like socially very, super engaged artist. Uh, but as a Minano, as a young person, uh, a, a big topic, a big thing that I focus on is humanity. And so, uh, one of the, if you actually look in my captions, and I know it's, it's sometimes an extra, but I talk about anxiety. And for me, anxiety, it's basically the only emotion that we all share. And uh, I'm talking about beyond humanity. I have talked about all kinds of organisms. Uh, in fact, all kinds of organisms, including plants, share anxiety. Anxiety is basically the only emotion that we all share. Um, and I guess for, for, for me, particularly, uh, when, as a young person, I struggle with identity. Um, and and I, I would say I'm, I'm a Chinese by descent, right? Uh, but I grew up uh, studying in, a, in an international school. I I watch American cartoons. I watch Japanese cartoon. I, I grew up listening to Japanese songs, Canadian songs, English songs. So I feel like I'm not just a Chinese. I'm not just a Hong Konger. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a I'm a human being. And so for me, my address of my, my way of addressing the theme of identity is that I'm a human being. And I think that's what we can kind of all agree on um, in, in today's society where it's super globalized and we all talk about, see we all have globalization and focus on individual identity of how we're Hong Kong Earth, we're Chinese, we're our Americans, we're our British, but we're all humans, to be honest. Um, and I think that's so uh, I have another question that I would like to ask Sandra. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> uh, that will be uh, your general impression about uh, this year finalist and also winners work in terms of photography. We have uh, Joseph and also Phil here to talk about their work, and I would like to know about your you know general idea about this share work in terms of photographic practice and also yeah. Um, I very much enjoyed my um, job of being one of several judges. I think the, um, the, the whole organization here and my fellow judges were all extremely interesting people. Um, I enjoyed looking at, at the material. I think it's the... Uh, it's, um, I've been I've been doing this a lot, <laughs> so um, there's always um, a lot of a lot of uh, applications. Many of them are not interesting. Most of them are not interesting, but the ones that are are really interesting. So I don't know how else to answer that. <laughs> Should I have a question for you? Yeah. Um, is, are you giving context for sort of? Uh, to better understand, I, can, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, are you like you are 
walk, like walking around, looking at the chocolate, like kind of the different photos and the exhibition out there, are you given a sort of context for why they why we chose things? No, why what like what the reason why the artists kind of created them or sort of a better understanding of the background, or is it only in sort of these talks now that you sort of discover the meaning behind these? There, there's um there's descriptive material on okay. each of the photographers okay. in the show. Uh, I'm more interested uh, in the transition in the photographic techniques uh, that um, given that how technology and everything has moved forward that uh, the two candidates uh, chose to go backwards and uh, <laughs> be uh, traditional and nostalgic perhaps and uh, when uh, the trend is so much with uh, the latest technology and latest techniques. Well, um, that depends on how you define the latest uh, technology. <laughs> uh, I, uh, well, if you s sh well, let's say I use a 5D Mark IV, is that the latest technology then? It's not necessarily the latest technology, right? So I guess it, when we talk about photography, I guess um, well, there, there's always been the same like photography. It's about drawing with for, uh, a photo, which, which means light. Um, and so I, I think it's it's really not about uh, the technology. Um, it's really about the, the conceptual framework of the work, and also uh, how we actually perceive uh, photography in these days. Um, are we still thinking in a very documentary way? Are we still focusing on what's real, what's not? Or are we focusing on something that's beyond? Um, and that, that's, I think that's one of the questions that we all ask. Uh, and, and if we're working on photography, we, uh, and it means all of us here, it has to be about perception. And it's about a perception of the world. So I guess it's, it's just how the changes, the transition of photography, uh, of course, is about technology, but also I think the majority of, of uh, the tr uh, majority of the transition is about your perception of reality. That's why your your work is so strong. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I have a, I, I have a few insights that I would like to share here about uh, the transition and also technology. A, uh, I. I think both Phil's and also Joseph's work um, demonstrate the potential of the transition of photographic practice in a very progressive way. And that makes me as an audience to rethink of contemporary photographic practice. I think that's very important to me on a personal level. Uh, but transition and technology in self I have been doing research on you know, photography, digital humanities, but most of the discussion actually see photographic image as information rather than a concept or an expression. So I think this area, there's still quite a lot of work, whether it's research or artistic practice, to work on to progress to that level. And finally, uh, it's only a personal remark, we have progression, but it's the art world, the photography world, ready for that as well. What if next year, opportunity, there is this web-based digital imaging rendering glitch project submit to the uh, competition? Are we ready yet? Can we recognize it as art or no? You know, but these questions are all equally exciting to me. If we have more questions to ask, make better work, more work, then I think we are doing really good indeed. So that would be some observations I have uh, to, yeah, yeah, to, to what we've discussed, yeah. Uh, but uh, last, actually we have, uh, we have another speaker that she cannot, unfortunately, she cannot be with us today. Her name is Hester Kaiser. She's a Dutch uh, writer, curator, Great woman, I would say. All right. Uh, her essay uh, is also, is included in the uh, in the catalog. Uh, it's a very dense but straightforward essay, actually. Uh, but I would like to take one sentence here as a departure, as a starting point 
for us to talk about and also for the audience for uh, to, to to let us know what you think about this this statement is uh, well I'm gonna say it what we are not able to see in the work of WMA master finalists this year I think it could be a good question for us to 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 think about and these could be good insight uh, for for photographers, artists, practitioners to think about what they can do for opportunities. Okay. Uh, Joseph feels Sandra, what you cannot see uh, in the work of WMA finalists this year. Uh, it won't be fair for me to say because I'm part of well part of it. So it's <laughs> uh, uh, it's I guess I guess it's the contacts. Um, and I guess it's it's also how we should. Um, I always like Wolfgang Timmer's work, and not because he's probably the hottest uh, artist right now in Europe and also in Europe America, but also how he incorporates photography with social engaged practice, mm -hmm. and how photography is a representative. Uh, it's, it's basically a sign of the reality. Uh, and so I guess it's, it's not about uh, what we see and what we don't see. I guess it's about how we talk, of, talk about them and what context do we see them. Um, and so it, we can talk about uh, Phil's work for sure in, in, a, in a political way, but also in an ontological way, and we, talk, we can talk about it in an art historical way. Uh, and so I, I think it's not really about, like I think particularly in Hester's essay, uh, the title of it is actually the death of the fewer, and the two way here. That's it's not exactly what the artists create, but also it's not just what the artists create, but also how the fewer are understanding the work and how deep are we able to have that conversation about a certain work. I'm sure there are a lot of layers in every single work that we have this year uh, in, uh, for all the contestants. We can talk about it in an art historical way, we can talk about it in a, in a philosophical way, we can talk about it in a political way. Uh, but I guess it, it, it's the fact that we actually talk about it. Um, and I think that's very, very important. Um, yeah. I think um, uh, what we cannot see in the exhibition, um, we cannot see what we cannot see. For example, <laughs> for example, uh, the way that the spectator, audience, how they interpret this work. I think um, maybe we could elaborate it in, in the discussion further. Um, what I'm feeling in the past, we 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 have agendas. Everyone have an agenda. Sometimes we, we share the agendas. We we share some some sort of context uh, to understand something. Uh, but but now today the social media the, the the AI and the machine the system um, the technology enable us to to develop our own context our own perception so um, the way we understand the world the way we understand every artwork in the show it is is highly personalized it, it is highly fragmentized. So what really uh, uh, intrigued me is, or uh, but but unfortunately, there's no way for me to, to 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 get it to know it is this fragmentization of the of the perspective, uh, one person, one way of seeing. In the past, we have the mass media, and now we don't have the mass media. The mass media seems like a mass media, but it's highly become an indiv individual things. Uh, so I think the discrepancy between the, the, the audience perception is one of the more interesting <coughs> thing to me to know. But it's also mysterious because there's no way at the end for me to know it. So it's, there's a dynamic. The dynamic is interesting. Can I ask you a question? You said that this work that you submitted mm -hmm. on the, this material here was very different from your other work. Mm. What? How is it different? What What is your other work about, and what um, is it like? I do uh, documentary. Mm -hmm. I do documentary, and some uh, thematic, conceptual. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the conceptual series. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it is uh, making use of very specific 
methodologies, mm -hmm. way of taking picture. Um, so this is one of the of the style, okay. Mm -hmm. And then one of the very specific method that I employ mm -hmm. to finish this work. And and some other work is uh, documentary, portraits. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's something in common. Mm -hmm. uh, the the common theme is um, it is usually is related to uh, memory. Is related to some 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 personal feeling mm -hmm. and mainly I'm looking for I, I maybe it's a clip is is cliche um, the way we look mm -hmm. and and I want to bring up the consciousness uh, to make people conscious about the way we look because photography is I think after all photography could could be anything but uh, we could not deny that uh, photography is one of the way that we could document the way of looking. Mm -hmm. I could not see what you see, mm -hmm. vice versa. But when you take a picture, I see what you see mm -hmm. from a particular point of view. So, but but what is what is it? What is a possibility? Or what if we pay attention? What with what what if I I I spend my energy on the consciousness of my way of looking. I'm looking at my looking, myself. So this is usually my common themes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but not necessarily provide the, 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 the visual look with a consistent style. Yeah, seeing is never a cliche. Mm -hmm. Seeing is the, I think seeing has been pretty much neglected in, um, uh, not just in photography, but in contemporary art. But uh, but that will be another level of discussion. Uh, yeah, so I would like to open up the floor. Any Q and A, or just let us know what you cannot say in the work among the WMA's finalists. Mm -hmm. Maybe I stand up as too short. Uh, I I will answer your question about what what I think is missing in a minute. Uh, but I would really like to say I like this exhibition a lot. Uh, I'm not a photographer at all, I'm just an ordinary citizen. I grew up in Hong Kong, I live, I've been living here for a long time and I've been away for a few years and then now I came back. So this exhibition I like it a lot because a lot of the works, I find it, they actually speak to me. I think as a viewer, it's very important that I can connect with the work. And I must say, the two series by the two artists here, I think they speak the most to us. I'm saying this not because you two are here. <laughs> it's really just because the case I, coming back, I, I find that I, I'm happy I, I was distant from my city for a while. But now coming back, I think I am also in a transitional period, seeing a lot of insecure, instability, uh, insta unstable uh, issues happening around. And the work uh, he here, I think they uh, give us a lot of space and room for reflection. And photography, I think, is a very important medium to, 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 for doing that, especially when Hong Kong, I, I'm still, I still think we're blessed that we can display uh, different kinds of or even political ones. Uh, so uh, the question that Sandra just posed about the political elements in the work, I think I hope the artists here, like the two of you, can continue to just show your personal feelings, your true feelings to the audience here. But that actually brings to my question and also my response to your question, what's missing. I actually can't quite see what next in this exhibition. Because transition to me, I'm a, I think, I, I always take transition very positively, but my, our city transition, at least for the time being, is seems to be quite a, a pleasant topic to talk with, to talk about. So from this exhibition, I would like to see more about how actually uh, can uh, th those work can tell us more about what next, what next for Hong Kong, what next for the changing city. And photography, that, that actually echoes what I've just said about photography is a very important medium. Uh, for people to reflect and so I, I'm not saying it's like a pointer but at least in this unstable period I think that is a very powerful medium for people here or uh, to understand or to reflect and also for people outside our city to understand our situation 
And so that brings me to my question uh, about photography in transition. About apart from the techniques in transition, I would like to know, especially as you two artists here or other members, uh, about how you actually in this insecure or unstable period, is there any limit that when you produce your photography work, is there any limit, limit or restriction? Uh, because I, I write, I share with my friends, but sometimes those really negative feelings, pieces, I would just try to keep it to myself because I think our city is just too much of like negative energy. So I just try to be more encouraging. So my question is photography in transition, especially in Hong Kong, how would, would you ever draw any limits to the true feelings that you're trying to show? I, I think it's, um, well again, uh, as I talk about anxiety, and, and for me, I actually go on to my uh, page. One of the last uh, few captions that I mentioned uh, that I talk about. It's it's. Uh, see, I don't know the, the exact future that's going to come, but then. Um, yeah, just at the back. Uh, so I don't know the answers to my queries towards the future, but. Nor do I know the way out of chaos. But it's at its very moment when we can be truly honest towards our own emotions. Um, and it's both a labor towards our future. And for me, that's that's just how I feel. And I guess that's how a lot of people in Hong Kong feel. We, I mean, we don't know exactly what would happen tomorrow or the very next second, but I guess at this time, we, we, when we are truly honest to our emotions, we realize we're actually the same. We're actually much more similar than we thought we are. I think this is what, um, that's what go beyond Hong Kong. That's what go into, tap into, the nature of humanity. Um, I guess for per se this work, see, I I have a particular political gender. I support a certain side of politics, and my parents support uh, the other side in a way. You know, sometimes, and of course we argue, right? Um, but uh, as a young person, I, I, I get angry. Uh, I, I guess I actually get so angry, and 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 um, and we have discussion with my friends and everything, and and. But then I realize it's so interesting because people with these two op totally opposite perspective actually share the same emotions, uh, which is anxiety, which is how we just don't know what will happen in the future. We're afraid, we're worried, we're insecure. Um, so I guess this is what we kind of have to realize um, that when, we when it comes to, of course in politics, we, we have something very objective, very clear, very concrete that we can talk about. But at, at the end of the day, the where to be humanistic, I, I think empathy is very important. And I guess understanding each other and understanding that we actually start from the same point, it's a very important attribute. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thank you for your question. I, I, I like your question. Uh, but I, my point of view is, uh, what is next? I don't know. What is next? I don't know. Maybe it's, it's not our job, or it is everyone's job to 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 think about what is next. Uh, and I personally, as an artist, uh, I want to maintain uh, some intensity of the sensibility with or, or my, myself, and also trying to uh, express that kind of uh, uh, um, point of view. Maybe not the political point of view, but uh, um, I will pay more attention about the the uh, the awareness of our perception, rather than um, uh, because I'm doing art. Of course, my art sometimes related to politics, uh, but it's not my obligation to promote certain political message. Sometimes I did, sometimes I did, and sometimes I don't. Uh, that depends. And for me, I think uh, to some extent it would be helpful, it would be helpful if we could maintain a peace of mind. I'm not saying that we, we, we should promote either side of, uh, of, of the uh, political uh, uh, comments, but I want to using this word, using my word, to to point out as a reminder that we need consciousness, 
that we need maybe instead of my that we need uh, to be more mindful so that we could make better decision, better judgment, no matter politically, <laughs> socially, or uh, or um, or even on on uh, on humanity. Yeah, who we are, what we do, what we think. Yeah, those <coughs> issue. I think um, this is a kind of a common theme that uh, most artists uh, uh, are working for. Just, just sorry. Just one last note because of what just what we just said. Uh, I guess when it comes to judgment and uh, the word, uh, yeah, judgment. I'd say um, <coughs> see some someone some someone actually I heard from uh, a teacher and was going not to name him. Uh, damn it! I okay. Anyway, uh, but not to tell you guys. Um, actually, someone told me that uh, there he's afraid of. Uh, how everyone can make photographs nowadays using using mobile phone because of how you cannot like people like your students will ask you so what's the point of learning photography then I can just re click a button and you know the computer what's the point of it um, and for me I personally um, I don't feel afraid at all I feel empowered and I guess for all of you guys here we're all empowered now that it's a way to way of saying and speaking out loud. Um, that we have, we share that platform to say out loud. And when it comes to transition of photography, now, if art in itself, and we're talking about contemporary art, not just photography, if art in itself is a process of democratization, then photography would be, would be the starting point because of how we are access, we have this great access to it that we can all speak. Well, but photography or art has not always been a process of democratization. I mean, I, I, I'd say, well, if we're aiming for it in a way, well, uh, that's if, if contemporary art, it's it's a process for, and for me personally, if uh, contemporary art as a process of democratization, mm -hmm. if we're to open up to public and to the masses, and we're talking, we're talking about breaking through the walls of the white cube. Then photography will be a starting point. Well, that's a nice idea. <laughs> well, um, to answer uh, what next, uh, I think uh, you might know that the theme for next year is opportunity. <laughs> and as we, uh, uh, I was one of the people uh, responsible for picking the theme. And when we picked the theme of transition, it was not just about political or Hong Kong transition. We thought about a lot of things and as reflected in the works that there is life and death transition, there is personal transition, there is gender transition, uh, public space transition. So I just would like to encouraged uh, there should be a more optimistic note <laughs> to all of this and I can also see in Phil's work that all the images are a little bit uh, summer, uh, fetish, uh, less slender than they actually uh, were. So, uh, that gives me a sense of robustness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good interpretation. About, uh, any other questions uh, from the audience? I just have a technical question about the flags. The both, 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 uh, both works are really very interesting, especially being from outside of Hong Kong. But you said you took those in 30 minutes. So, did you sound say that? Yeah. Yeah. So the, was it like a super windy day or ha ha? I mean, that flag <laughs> was really going crazy. That's, that's just how it is. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's just uh, there's no secret to it. It's just well, the thing is, of course, there's also a lot of um, the, the the technical part of it. It's not how, and I think that's interesting because it's not how you actually control the camera. Right. The technique. It's how I perceive things. So the the fact that I. Um, I, I can tell you 
one of the, the easiest way to take good picture and clean and minimal picture. Um, see, I, I, a lot of people, they like to use still life and they, they do it within the studio and they have a clean backdrop. For me, the easiest way to take clean photographs without actually setting a backdrop and everything, and you want to do it outside on the street, is to use the sky as the backdrop. And the sky is the cleanest backdrop, basically. Um, and that's one of the techniques I use. And then uh, I use that and I, I observe and I see the, the flag is just like that. And, and uh, see, what happened is the flag, see, we, we expect the flag to be like that, right? But the wind doesn't just go like that. The wind goes all the way. So the wind goes like that. So the flag's like that. <laughs> Not like that. Yeah, so like it's just that. My, my idea yeah. About flags. yeah, so uh, I guess that's a magic photography because when you want to capture that moment, it becomes frozen and becomes very really different. Uh, and that's why I like to kind of call it sculpture. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Yes, please. I just have two more simple questions uh, about the works itself. I can ask where where does this flat pole come from? Is there any particular? Meaning? It's it's in central. It's in, uh, next to AIA from very you know where it is, uh, but somehow people say they they didn't see the flag anymore. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's there. Yeah. Then my other short question goes to Phil's work. Uh, the, I, I'm curious to know where these like photos come from. Because when I, when I walked around, I saw your work, I saw it is displayed like flatly, horizontally. I feel, I'm feeling like I am reading a official government periodical. That was lean, or lean, lean. Yeah, the yearbook. Yeah, yearbook from the government where you just like stick on the quite boring one, but you, then you see all those official photos, some official photos. So I wonder, I, I had that feeling when I looked at your work. So I wonder where these photographs actually. Um, yes, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, these photographs, I found them on the internet. I found them on the internet, and then I'm because every one of those, they have a lots of pictures. Yes, you could find lots of pictures. I'm looking for some picture I I feel that familiar. Yeah. And then and then and then I use that picture and get it printed with a with a color laser and try to reshoot, taking picture of pictures. Uh, so um, yeah, I I, I I found this image on the internet. And then the way I found it is uh, I I looking for the images that I feel familiar, and and try to make it unfamiliar with my angle. Any other question? Then, if you guys want to talk about what we have just done, the just done trip. So again, what is what is? Well, if not, then I think uh, we can finish the round take uh, the, the session, photography in transition now. But uh, if you do have any other question that you want to talk to us individually, uh, please do. But once again, I would like to thank uh, the Wing Foundation. Uh, great work! Come on, uh, you have been uh, allowed us to employ to exercise. Um, the very democratic nature of this democratic media photography for personal and professional development and also social betterment. So I just want to say thank you so much, Wayne Foundation, uh, to have us here and also to have this exhibition and this yearly uh, scheme uh, uh, for art, photography, and Hong Kong. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.